Hey guys, Bito here to tell you about the latest from Delane Dark Waters out February 10th on Napalm Records. This album has 11 tracks, 51 minutes in length, and this is the band's 7 full length studio album. They are a Dutch symphonic metal band. When I look at the design of this album, I see three different ways of building a record coming together under one single umbrella. I see an album that has a lot of flow, a lot of ebbs and flows, very dynamic from that point of view, changing the style, changing the experience from song to song, never allowing the listener to feel completely comfortable and never giving you two songs that sound or feel exactly the same back to back. This is very important for the, the playability of the album, but also for that flow to be a little bit more constant. This album also offers you a sense of growth. So in those ebbs and flows that you have, those ebbs and flows become a little bit more defined as the album progresses because there's growth in sound. The album picks up volume. It starts a lot more direct in the beginning and then it becomes a lot bigger at the end. The symphonic side of the band comes uh, a little bit more into a predominant role as far as the experience is concerned as the album progresses. Some of the layers keeps, keep getting added and those layers allow the record to gain momentum and gain growth as you progress. Now you have these two different approaches coming together and when you have two approaches that are different but still have some similarities it allows the album to feel cohesive, it allows the album to feel balanced regardless if you're going up or down, regardless of that exponential growth everything still feels like it has the exact same starting point and this is very important for the album to feel as one. You don't just have here a collection of great songs, you have here a collection of great songs that create a great album all around. The design plays a very important role in this perspective and it plays a very important role on how the listener is going to perceive the experience of going from first to last. As far as sound is concerned, this album is heavily orchestrated. The keyboards, the synths, all of the symphonic elements of this record play a huge role. I would say that they are the spinal cord of the album. It doesn't matter if you look at the opening songs, like I said, they're a little bit more direct, uh, a, a little bit more popish and because of that a little bit more direct or if you look at the end of the record where the songs are a lot more symphonic in nature feeling a lot bigger a lot more robust with bigger volume a lot more epic doesn't matter which way you're looking at it those orchestrations those symphonic elements are the ones generating the experience and having a direct impact on how you're perceiving these individual songs as far as the characteristics that they have this is the backbone this is perhaps that red line that connects every single song regardless of how far away from the beaten path they go or how close to it they stay. The drums and guitars play two different roles and their roles determine exactly how the album grows or how the ebbs and flows move. If you look at the drums for example they are very warm and they have a very substantial approach in terms of grounding and creating roots for everything else that's happening around them. When you have albums that are heavily dependent on orchestrations or symphonic elements, they tend to become very light in nature. They do become epic, they do become larger than life, but also very light. And this record pushes the drums into a role that allows the album to still have some weight. And this is important because you have two elements that are very different from one another, but two elements that when they come together allow the songs to feel more substantial. There's more meat on the bone when you have that lightness of the orchestrations mixed in with a little bit more heaviness and a little bit more warmth from the drums. The guitars are perhaps the element that stays in the middle, sometimes taking more of one role versus the other, but they're always there in the middle and then deriving towards the orchestrational side or deriving more towards the heavier side of the drums. This is an important glue that allows the tracks to have that ebb and flow and never lose track of the original path, but also have that growth without losing track of the original path. I like the heavier side that the guitars offer to this record because from the melodic side they blend really well with the orchestrations but the orchestrations are already super melodic so you don't see as much of an impact there as you do when they become slightly heavier allowing the volume of this album to feel a little bit thicker to feel a little bit more in your face. The solos are phenomenal throughout the record always adding value to the songs always adding value to the overall design. Throwing in some acoustic guitars is also a little bit of a nice touch in order to create some diversity so that it doesn't come down to just the role of the guitars. There's a little bit of a diverse approach in terms of the execution as well. When it comes to the vocals, guest performances are great on this album. I mean, you have Marco Hitella, uh, that's 
that's a great uh, guest performer, if you will, to have on this album. I honestly feel like he's the sixth member of the lane. Uh, so it was really nice to see a song with him. You have Paolo Ribaldi. Uh, th there's a lot of uh, th there's a lot of value to be added when you have guests coming in, but when it comes down to the vocals, Diana is enough. She has a great voice. I honestly feel like having a guest vocalist adds value to a track. It adds value to an overall record, but it has to be included to add that same value. Diana really carried the album vocally all the way through. Those are just some spices that got added into the recipe. Her vocal performance is very warm, is very charismatic. I feel like she has the range to match both sides of Delane. The more direct side that we saw at the beginning of the album with more pop elements, but also the more symphonic side, the more over the top side that we see as the album progresses, we see towards the end of the record. Incredible range, incredible voice on full display throughout this entire album. This is a record that uh, it feels to me had to be important. It had to be, um, it, it had to have an impact. Considering everything that happened with the band coming into this album, I feel like a lot of people had question marks in terms of where this record was going to go. I was one of them. But if they were aiming for the fences, this album is definitely a home run. I feel like the progression of the design of the record, the progression of the sound, what I saw from the more pop side of the lane and what I saw from the more symphonic side of the lane, I was extremely happy with both ends of the spectrum and the songs that kind of fell in the middle really allowed me to connect the uh, connect the band in general. So this is a record that surpassed my highest expectations that I had for it. Super enjoyable album to listen to, a an album that has a lot of life, that is simple to digest and simple to process. It doesn't really force something onto the listener that the listener is not ready to receive. And because of that, because of some of the simplicity of its mechanisms, because of some of the, re the direct approach that they use, specifically on how they created the chorus on a lot of songs on this album, the record becomes easily memorable. And that's exactly what you want out of any single record that you release. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I have to start off with Hideaway Paradise. This is the opening track. And when you talk about a pop infused song, it doesn't get much more than this one. What a way to start off the record. Cause I feel like while being very pop infused, it still had a lot of symphonic elements in it. So it's a little bit of a glimpse musically and even vocally of what this whole album is gonna be about, of, of the roller coaster ride and even the growth that this album offers right in that opening track. Even though this is definitely a song that, that tips the scale more towards the pop side than anything else, I still felt like there were glimpses within this song of what the journey was gonna be like and that's really important for any opening song on any record. Musically, vocally, the album very dynamic, very engaging. The drums and guitars together add a lot of volume, counterbalancing some of their more electronic pop sound that the track has, uh, giving it a little bit of a thicker experience at times and allowing the keys then to just weave in and out, creating a lot of movement, creating that pop experience, uh, creating a lot of brightness to how this song comes across. Vocally very warm, the delivery is exceptional, great layers, great performance vocally, a track that, that outside of the sound that it has and how direct it feels, the vocals is really what nails it home in order to make this song as impactful as it is. Next we have Tainted Hearts, a uh, bigger song in the forefront with a very interesting symphonic backdrop. At least that's how I perceived it. It's a song of layers and it has really two well-defined layers, like I said, with that bigger symphonic backdrop and a little bit of a bigger sound in the forefront. Now this allows for the song to be very dynamic, to be very rich, using acoustic guitars, keys, and, and then building upon those two elements in order to add layers as you progress. Because this is a song that you really feel the progression from the verses building all the way into the chorus. It, it reaches that climax once you reach that chorus. It's a song that has that linear but still upwards movement from beginning all the way to the end. This allows the song to feel heavier at times, more stripped down at others, but always a very rich experience all around regardless of where you are, verses or chorus. And having this dynamic allows the song to have all the right pieces in the right place, to not feel unbalanced throughout its entire existence. Last but not least, Invictus, featuring Marco Hitella and Paolo Ribaldi. Uh, this is, in my humble opinion, the biggest song 
on the record. Maybe not the biggest song musically, but when you look at the vocal performance and you look at the sound that, uh, that merges with that vocal performance, this definitely becomes the biggest, more epic song that this album offers. It's very engaging from the symphonic side, over the top at times, feeling very cinematic, almost built like a movie score, and then vocally rich. Vocally rich in terms of the guest vocalists, Marco is phenomenal on this track. He really adds a different layer, he adds a different perception, he stretches out the song, he gives a different kind of emotion that only he can do with his own vocal approach, and then Diana is phenomenal. Diana has a great tonality, she has a great delivery, she knows exactly the right momentum to come in, and for a song that it's this big, that has these many moving parts, I felt like she was absolutely comfortable in the zone and where she was in order to give the track everything the song needed from her, blending perfectly in with, with the voices that accompanied her. And like I said, Marco, it was the cherry on top as far as creating the biggest song musically and vocally when you bring them together musically and vocally on this record. This is it, The Lane with Dark Waters on February 10th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.